Hello, and welcome. I don't know if we have the sound. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new Substance live stream. I am Vincent Go, and I'm really pleased to be your host tonight with a special guest, Eric Wiley. Hi, Eric. How is it going? Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks uh, for being here. We are also with uh, Marine and Casimir in the chat. So in case you have any question uh, during the recording, don't hesitate to ask them or just to chat with them. They, they are here to, to answer all your questions. So tonight we are going to say to talk a bit about Eric Wiley, Wiley latest Substance Source uh, release. Uh, he made a specific uh, signature drop. Uh, so we are going to talk about this. Uh, so, but before to to do this, uh, we are going to talk about uh, about Eric himself. So maybe Eric, you you can share your screen, and uh, we yeah. we are going to. Oh, so this is you first. Do you see this? So yeah. So here is your screen. So you have been in the industry uh, for quite a while, especially with substance designers. So you have been known for different materials, and before to. to talk about this substance source, what you have done to substance source. Maybe we can see some of them. Yeah. Um, just a little bit about, about myself. I'm currently an environment artist at uh, Blizzard. Um, I've been working in games for about 11 years now, and I've been using a substance for three. So I'll quickly go through some of the, the substances that, that put me on the map, I guess. I think this was the first one, this uh, dead fish pile. <laughs> yeah. Definitely well known. I guess it has been selected for the um, Insanity Award uh, two years ago, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, for, for people who don't know the Insanity Award, we just choose the, the most insanely good substance designer work. Uh, and we just uh, select them uh, internally at, uh, at uh, Substance by Adobe and make uh, uh, and present it at the uh, end of the year. Yeah. So. And these were just done for fun, like just trying to push the limits of, of substance, really. Yeah, it was quite, quite impressive as well. Beach debris pile. <laughs> this was actually featured in a 3D Artist magazine. Do you want to check that out? And this is a mix. Uh, everything is done in substance in this one as well? Yes, 100% uh, substance. Yeah, so that's really crazy. <laughs> And then this was a tutorial I did uh, last year for Level Up Digital. And you can get the tutorial on Gumroad, some tentacles. Yeah, this one uh, has made quite a lot of noise uh, online, especially because uh, on Level Up, uh, it's, it's uh, curated by, by Daniel Tiger. So you can make sure it's, it's quality. And it, it catched uh, the eyes on many people. And I see a lot of people online just sharing how they did your tutorial because the visual is is just turning, and the shape, of course, uh, it, you pushed the boundaries really, really high for this one. I have to say, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, actually, this is the perfect uh, the material to make the transition with the C signature drop that you 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 did with us. Yeah. So, can you tell us a bit more about this uh, this uh, signature drop that you did, uh, which we, I think we released it. Well, one week ago, something like that. And first, it's beautiful. Uh, we have like, a, I, I had a super transition. I, I wanted to say we are passing from the day of the tentacle to Monkey Island. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's a bit uh, yes. because there is this mood. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, the substance team asked me what I wanted to do. And I was throwing around a few ideas and landed on pirates. Um, and I wanted to take it in like a stylized direction too. I think all the releases up to this point have been very realistic. So uh, that was a fun challenge as well. Here's the 15 materials that I landed on. Um, we have five for the ship, five for the island, and five for the port. And I'll quickly show some of my uh, references and, and go through the drop. Yeah, and the, the crazy thing, thing is that uh, the, the stylized uh, aspect that you give is just turning, and that's the, the cool thing with procedural materials, that you are not limited to make ultra realistic. You can go for super stylized as, as well, and it works like, yeah. like this. 
Yeah, I think it was like right when I was starting, you guys dropped like a huge pack of stylized materials and I was like, ooh, that looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely so, yeah. yeah, I started gathering reference for the ship and trying to figure out like what five materials I wanted to make. Like I definitely wanted like, originally I wanted like cannons with like the gun ports. Um, that ended up stretching a little too much in the height map. So <laughs> I ended up just doing like the side of the ship. Um, of course, Which is need... already impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course and... you need like the captain's cabin with the windows and like an ornate stern. Um, I actually was lucky enough to go to the San Diego Maritime Museum like right before uh, like the COVID lockdown. So I was able to to tour like the um, HMS Surprise and uh, get some pretty good reference of like mm, shipwrecks and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> even though I ended up going stylized, it was still useful. Um, the, the, the funny part is, and we have been noticing that for some of the latest uh, signature drop uh, on uh, Substance Source, is you didn't only make the, the, the materials, you, you made a full scene finally at the end. Yeah. When I first started the ship, I was going to do like everything just displaced in substance. Um, and instead of a trim sheet, I was originally going to do like a rigging or like a netting material with ropes and stuff. But I don't know, it proved too challenging to try to build a ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just why with not? Displacement. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I might as well just embrace modeling and, and make a trim sheet. And so yeah, we won't say no, of course. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we request material from Susan Source, but if the artist wants to make a full scene, why not? It's, it's even better. It's, uh, and the scene is on obviously gorgeous. So, so this you. one are, are the paint amounts, so we can yeah. see. Yeah. There are a lot of parameters that I wanted to, to have like on every wood material. So like you'll see like a lot of shared parameters, like there, there's like paint amount and um, yeah, like all the colors and, and roughness and stuff. Yeah. So here's a render out of Unreal. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, like all the planks are displaced with tessellation in Unreal. And then like uh, just with like <laughs> bits of like trim sheet modeling. Like So here yeah, what you, just... you mean just to me to be clear is that you have a, let's say a simple geometry and, and the, the details and the are in the displacement and height map. Yeah, like all the the gun ports here, all the planks, it's all displaced. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and for a few materials in each set, I tried to make like the, the presets like completely different from each other. So, so it's like three materials in one. Um, I tried to do that as much as possible, but um, uh, it's a lot more work. <laughs> yeah, but at the end, it's way easier to use for the final user. And so for like this scene, like the deck is is displaced with tessellation and everything else is just that one uh, trim sheet texture. So I, I used it a lot. <laughs> that, that's great. That, that's really crazy. For people who don't know trim sheet, actually it's like bands of, uh, of textures which are packed in the same texture. So you can reuse, uh, ju use just one material and, uh, and place it uh, on different aspects. Like, yeah, yeah, I think we see, we can see it like these horizontal bands, uh, yeah. really useful, heavily used in game, in game uh, industry, of course. And uh, yeah, uh, the fact that you did it with Substance uh, make it even better because as there are various para parameters on it, uh, it means that you, you have a lot of vari possible variations. Yeah. So no, you're showing the island material. Yeah, uh, after I was... Uh or after I had completed a few of the ship materials, I was pretty tired of, of wood. So <laughs> I wanted to move on to some like natural organic materials. Um, yeah, of course you need like, like a cliff and, and some palm trees. And this is the, the atlas that I'm gonna be breaking down um, earlier. Yeah, later yeah later. this one is interesting. Yeah, it's, it's specifically interesting for this uh, signature release because it's one of the first uh, a procedural atlas that uh, uh, we do, uh, we release. We have some some other, but uh, the nice thing is you mix the procedural aspect with the fact that we support atlases, of course, in, uh, in substance painter and substance alchemist. Uh, they work pretty well, so it 
it brings a lot of possibility. You have the parameters and the power of atlases. So that's what we are going to focus after your, your, your first presentation. Originally, I wanted to do like a, a treasure cave as kind of like the third set, but it seemed like a, a very similar materials to the island. So I ended up changing that to a port. But yeah, I thought the treasure kind of belonged with the island materials because of like buried treasure. <laughs> that works well. And here's the island scene. Um, all, all displaced, like the cliff meshes themselves are like kind of like egg shaped. Uh, just spheres. <laughs> and I actually, yeah. one of the presets is like, like fully covered uh, moss. So if you just uh, crank up the moss slider, you can, you, I snuck in kind of a moss material and I'm blending that to, towards the top of the, the rocks and then blending this like darker uh, rock uh, near the ocean. So basically in that case, you just deform slightly some spheres or some basic shapes, as you say, egg shapes, just yeah. place them and then play with displacement and parameters. Yes. And I'm just changing the tiling basically on, on different ones. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Then. So we can do the next monkey island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The sand was a good opportunity to, to introduce like a lot of variation between the presets. Um, just have some like bare sand, have some tide pools and have the, the, the sand forms actually change like as the, the sea level rises. So here's some close ups of the treasure. I ended up uh, making some like animal coins. <laughs> so we have an octopus coin and a crab coin here. Yeah, and actually this like little uh, layout, this isn't just for presentation. If you crank like the, the wealth slider parameter, like it'll actually start masking the coins. And so you can create a little pile of coins. That's crazy. That's a, I, I love the, all the details uh, you put in, uh, in, all, in all of that. And uh, go ahead, go ahead. I let you, before to start the, your demo, we'll take some questions, but I, I, I will let you first, uh, do this, do this part. Yeah, so the, the last set is the port. Um, it was a great opportunity to introduce some architectural elements. Um, you get some stone, some terracotta, and some plaster. Um, yeah, it's just, just a lot of variety, which is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I was pulling reference from everywhere. Yeah, that's crazy because you, you made like 15 materials, but just with what you showed, I have the feeling that you <laughs> you made like 30 or 40, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who knows? There's so many uh, presets that I didn't even use in my scene. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of like the port that I built, I'm trying to go for like an inn or a, a pub vibe. And I actually started mixing in some of the ship materials as well, if you look closely. So for the seawall in the the dock, I actually um, used a, a sea level perimeter and I just copied it over. So you can actually like um, create like a gradient of, of barnacles and seaweed. That was fun to do. Yeah, it's really convincing. It works well. Yeah, this one, that's the one I, I chose actually to do for my uh, Zoom background because uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just cool. I like that. And here's some basic cobblestone path. Um, yeah, and I mean, like this, the cobblestone, for example, has like a herringbone uh, preset that I never used, but but it's there. So, yeah. Yeah, there, there are actually many people in the chat that will be curious to see the uh, the, the starting geometry when you are, I don't know if you have it here, but uh, if not, maybe you can add it to your, your art station because, because many are really curious to see the before, after, to see uh, what relies on the textures and what. Uh, I do have on. it on my art station here. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see that. Yeah, so it's just kind of like these blob <laughs> shapes. Uh, uh, they're terribly yeah. modeled. Um, and no. then I'm just displacing them uh, 
in a yeah, but it works. It just works. <laughs> That's the most important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like a terrible seam on one of the sides, so like I'm trying to hide that. In, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People were case. complaining about the seams on the. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No one saw. <laughs> no one saw it. And uh, also, uh, someone is asking uh, if the five materials uh, you chose for each uh, each uh, area uh, were part of of a brief we gave you, or if it was optimization on your part, or you just fix yourself this limit. How how did you choose this kind of this uh, palette of material? Uh, yeah, they let me choose, but yeah, performance was definitely something I had to keep in mind. Like I'm used to just going like all out, like whatever it takes, like if I make a substance graph that takes five minutes to load, like to get the end <laughs> yeah. result, that's what I'll do. <laughs> but uh, with substance source, you kind of have restrictions and they want it to load in like 700 milliseconds on like a, a pretty old graphics card. So uh, it has to be like, like very light. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you you get the points. We because we of course work with a super talented artist, and one of the things we do is as it has to open quickly, we ask for a lot of optimization. So there is some adaptation uh, to the workflow compared to production, where you what is interesting for most of the production is the final textures, regardless if the graph is fast or not. Here we really want it to open quickly, so. Yeah, that's part of the substance source uh, yeah. <laughs> requirements. Yeah, they told me like you won't be able to use like a full res uh, flood fill, and I was like, what? That's like my my one node that I, <laughs> I probably always <laughs> use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a flood fill is crazy. Uh, th there is another people uh, who may give you an idea for another tutorial because he say, are there any resources that show how the material are applied, uh, like how the material for the deck for the ship? So. It's a bit like the before after, but more in detail. So that's not what we are going to see tonight, but that could be a, a, a good idea for, for, for you to do in the future. Yeah, stay tuned to ArtStation. I can add those. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so don't, don't hesitate. I think we are going to share the link of the ArtStation on, uh, on the chat. So follow Eric. He's a nice guy. And uh, someone else is asking, uh, you, are you using Substance uh, software for saving the reference images? Uh, I guess maybe it refers to the PBR node or to make the renders of the materials. Um, the balls themselves were ju just done in Marmoset. OK. So, yeah. So Unreal for the scenes and Marmoset for the balls. And I'm using okay. a pure ref to, for my reference images, <laughs> if anybody's curious. And we, we are going to keep the other question for later on because some of them are already in, uh, in Substance Designer. So, but don't hesitate to, to ask questions. As we say, we are going to make a few pauses and a bigger one at the end. Um, and no, I think we can pass to Substance Designer. What do you think, Eric? Oh, except if you sure. wanted to show us uh, other, other things. Oh, no. OK, let's go. Substance Designer time. All right, so when you open the Atlas, you'll see this. Um, the way I like to work is uh, I like to use uh, subgraphs a lot. So I usually uh, create a different graph for every single leaf. Um, let's jump into the, the palm leaf here first. So this is kind of the end shape that we're going to be making here. And feel free to stop me if anybody has any questions. Stop. No, no, no. <laughs> go ahead. All right. So um, I'm basically driving a lot with this uh, gradient linear one. Um, the substance source team uh, makes sure that I only use like one generator, <laughs> like uh, like once and that's it, you know, like there's no duplicate nodes anywhere. So that's why I'm just like transforming it and, and rotating it. I'm not using like a second uh, gradient. Um, yeah, that's actually a good way to learn opening a substance source uh, <laughs> graph because they are optimized uh, to, to death. Yeah, people are probably like, what? Why, why didn't you just use a, a second node? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so to create like the base shape, I'm uh, subtracting this like horizontal gradient with a curve node. And I'm basically 
creating half of my leaf shape like in this curve. And that's using a subtract. And then if you use a histogram scan after that, like you'll get like half of a leaf shape. And I have a switch node here because I'm actually using this graph for two um, leaves. Like I have like a small a thin uh, palm branch and a, a bigger one and I can switch between them. So then I'm translating it over and mirroring it. So we basically have our base silhouette here. I'm using a multi-directional warp to just kind of break it up a little bit and add some character. Um, I'm inverting using a, a distance because it's uh, cheaper than a bevel. And then using a curve to kind of round out the forms. So that'll give us this shape. And then down here, I'm kind of creating the veins. I'm creating small cuts, like large cuts, and just some height variation. So for like the veins, I'm using a tile random. And this kind of, and I'm kind of um, splitting it down the center here so that the two sides of the leaves are, are different. Tile, uh, tile random because it's, it's uh, cheaper as well? Compared yes. To tile simpler. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try to use a tile random or a tile generator whenever possible because uh, a tile sampler is, is very expensive. Yeah, it's good, but expensive. Yeah. So for like these uh, small cuts here, I'm actually using another uh, tile random here to kind of um, create this. And I'm, I'm actually using this uh, gr a gradient linear three. I'm just rotating it and then plugging that into my uh, tile random here. So this shape kind of drives these cuts. I'm directionally warping like all of these um, yeah, the, the warp are interesting. These warps, yes, it, it gives directly the we we pass from like a really rigged uh, straight lines to something that already looks like a leaf. Yeah, I'm actually warping all these by the same um, two nodes here. I'm using kind of like this wedge uh, gradient, which is just derived from this gradient, and then I have like a small kind of stem gradient so you can kind of see like the first one warps everything like towards the the length of the leaf and then then i'm also just kind of adding this like additional warp in the center and i'm doing that for everything so um yeah so the the smaller cuts are um from these shapes i'm basically just using a, a histogram scan again to to get this. For the bigger cuts, I'm, I'm using this. And it's a very similar method, um, just using two tile randoms. Um, I'm using kind of this grayscale one as well as a gradient one. And then I'm multiplying that to just kind of create some height variation so that not all the cuts are the, the same size. And then I'm warping it by the same warps. And then I'm subtracting this uh, adjusted curve here. I kind of just round it off the top. Of, and that'll give us like this, these weird cuts. And then I'm blurring it a little bit and using a histogram scan. And then I'm multiplying that out of our shape here. This is a distance, now, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I use distance for bevel. <laughs> Usually, yeah, like I had to go through and replace all the distance and curve as well. I see you. You are using a lot of curves to adjust uh, uh, the result. That's that's awesome. There, there is someone actually who is asking uh, because you, we talked about optimization, and he, he was asking if there is a nodes popular nodes that are excluded or optimization reason. We see flood field. Uh, is, yeah, do you see other ones? Like a lot of the pixel processor ones, there's like, I'd say like the shape scatter, any of the Atlas nodes, like there's a bunch that are kind of just off limits. Uh, 
and we need the graph to run well in both engines, like DirectX and the SSE2. So yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah once again, challenging. It, yeah, exactly. Once again, it's not that they are not good and that you shouldn't use that, but in the context of substance source, we have to make sure that they open everywhere. So uh, we have to take this in account if we if we put something and some someone is opening it and say, oh, I can't. It takes like uh, one minute to open. You won't be you won't be happy. So that is, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, we're paying a lot of attention to like the milliseconds here. And if I switch engines, you'll see that like the the timings are, are even different. So now yeah. it's like uh, 124 milliseconds. <laughs> So then I'm multiplying that on my kind of like my uh, vein uh, shapes here. And then from there, I'm kind of overlaying that on this uh, height. Let me go back here. So I started with this uh, gradient here and I'm using a, a curve to kind of create like the two halves of the leaf. Mm -hmm. And then I'm multiplying kind of like a blurred silhouette over it. And then um, I'm multiplying kind of our cuts and kind of like our little uh, vein details here. How did you do the, the blurred silhouette? Um, that's just taking the shape that we got from the cuts earlier. And I'm just yeah. using a blur. Oh, OK, simply. Yeah. And I'm just multiplying that on top of this like uh, curved shape here. Nice. So then I'm blurring it again, just a little bit, and uh, and then adjusting the height map slightly with a, a curve. Then if you go back here, like I created kind of like a height uh, variation, so that like different sections of the leaf, will, it, it won't be perfectly flat. Like you'll have some parts that are higher than the others. Um, I'm using this uh, tile sampler again. And I'm just like directionally warping each half. So, so you get this kind of shape. So kind of interesting. And then I'm using the same directional warps again. To... Yeah, but I, I have a question for you. It's not for, for the people, not from the chat. But um, when you do this, uh, do you think already, because you are starting with blocks, and we, we are ending with a leaf. And so do you already know, OK, I know how I will do that, or, or do you just use trial and error? So I, I guess it's a mix of both, but. Uh... Yeah, substance is always <laughs> some trial and error for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably spent like, I don't know, like an hour, an hour and a half just uh, messing around with these nodes and like, testing out like the, the height map and like this kind, kind of was too uniform. It, it would be nice if some of these like flaps were, were a different height values. And so oh. lastly, that's all I'm doing. I'm just multiplying uh, this uh, node on here to just create more variation. Awesome. And which leads to a question. Uh, someone is asking, how long does it take? So. We, we can think in three steps. How, do, how long does it take to make a leaf like that, then the full material, then one of the scene you made uh, uh, for, 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 oh, for man. properties? <laughs> well, all the scenes were made in the last uh, month. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's working pretty late nights to, to try to, to finish those. Um, I'd say like the average material would take me a, a few days. Um, yeah, some of them are a lot more complex than others. Like this one's actually like pretty simple, like all things considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we can say what, uh, and it's really well organized, so which is cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's impressive. And once again, the uh, the SBS are are provided within the substance source. So this is an excellent way to learn. Just go take a material, open it, and see how things are done because Eric is one of the best uh, Substance Designer user uh, on Earth. Oh, I don't and, know about that. 
<laughs> we have to ask to Jonathan in the chat. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that's a, an excellent way to learn. So now we are in the full. So so you like? Was it a, a, a requirement to separate in the, in subgraphs, or it's just the way you work? Um, that's just the way I work, and uh, like it's nice to just be able to grab like the the various elements and reuse them in other graphs. So like. I use a moss on some of my other materials and I just stole like the small leaf from this graph and just reused it. So yeah, it's great yeah. to just have a subgraph. Plus it makes uh, everything look nice and clean. Definitely. So next I'm gonna talk about the, the vine leaf, which is basically just this uh, super simple uh, basic leaf. Um, the main difference here is that I'm creating four outputs. I'm basically creating a gradient to the center. I'm creating a vein mask. I have our basic height and our opacity. And this is using a lot of the same techniques as the, the palm leaf. I'm starting with the same two gradients. Um, like here, you can see the curve, like it's super simple, just an in, in arc, translating it over and to get our basic shape. For the, the veins, I'm uh, using this uh, tile random. It's like super basic, just set to, to the X and Y to one and three and the, the split mode to none. And it'll give us this. And I'm just directionally warping that by, <laughs> by a, like a half black, half white um, node here. And I'm just creating that with a uniform color black and a uniform color white and with a blend set to 0.5 on the right. Then I'm directionally warping that uh, vertically so the, the veins are offset from each other on each side of the leaf. And uh, we, we can see a smaller optimization trick. If you look at the uniform color, the size is uh, 16 by 16. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that'll save like, like 0. 0.0. Two milliseconds. Yeah, but Substance Source Team will say thank up. you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm using a directional warp, uh, same as before. I'm adding our uh, stem here with a, a shape node that's just a very thin um, on the, the X size. That's a subtract. I'm inverting this. Um, and then I'm using a distance instead of a bevel again to kind of create some, some 3D forms here. I'm inverting that and, and blurring it. So, so now we're starting to get, to get like a leaf a form here. Um, up here, I'm kind of taking this, like I rotated this gradient by 180 degrees and I'm uh, blending it uh, with a blend multiply on our uh, kind of like our veins here to kind of create some like thinner veins, like as it goes out from the, the stem. And blurring it a little bit and then like further uh, pushing the, <laughs> the veins in. Uh, this is just another subtract. And then I'm multiplying like kind of like a blurred silhouette of our leaf on top to kind of give us like our final uh, veins here. And I'm inverting that again, blurring it, kind of using a, a slope blur um, set to blur and I'm, the intensity is super low to kind of just inflate the shapes a little bit. So this kind of gives us like some, a little crevice of the veins that you'd kind of see on the top of the leaf, if that makes sense. Definitely. And then I'm multiplying that on our, uh, like kind of like our larger forms here. And I'm using that same slope blur technique for the, these larger forms as well. So I blurred it a little bit and then using a slope blur to inflate it. Yeah, that's interesting because that's something who, which is always recurring to really good artists is the, the, the attention to details, like this kind of stuff that people are going to not think about, just make the regular shape and you are just pushing a bit at some point and that's what gives the the credibility at the end and that's that's awesome yeah 
I have someone who asked you, <laughs> and we were almost talking about that before. Did you cry a lot? I often myself cry using Substance Designer. Oh, yes. Are time. you okay, <laughs> Eric? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, uh, on some of my bigger graphs, uh, like it, it will get like too complex, but I think for the most part, <laughs> With yeah, this, with you, you create the first year. You you create the first year, and then it's getting better. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> and, still working uh, on it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we are going to get over it. And um, which uh, so this one is more uh, rec um, another question um, regarding the scene you presenting at the beginning about um, if you are using um, div which node uh, are you using to layer the different elements. Um, I guess the blend lo blend node at least, which is there on others. Yeah, I'm usually usually using a blend node set to max lighten. Um, yeah, like normally, like if I was layering stuff like the debris pile and stuff, like it would be like ten different tile samplers that are layered on top of each other with blends. But um, yeah, that would be way too expensive for for source. Yeah, uh, yeah. for source, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's super effective, but uh, yeah, for source. But uh, that's something you should you can and should use at all. It works well. And someone else asked why Unreal and not uh, Marmoset to do the final render for the scenes. Um, Any specific reason? Or? That's a good question. I'm <laughs> more familiar with Marmoset, but I don't know. I, I just kind of wanted to challenge myself, and uh, I don't know. It seemed like I've seen a lot of cool like Unreal scenes lately on ArtStation, and it seemed like. It'd be be fun to learn, but oh, it also so slowed it, me down. You were time. just learning, so so people are going to cry in the chat because you are making a scene like that. So yeah, it was just to cry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but and, the substance uh, plugin in Unreal is great. Like I can uh, bring in my substance files and actually adjust parameters like in real time in the viewport. So that's super helpful. Like if I don't like the tiling on on this stone wall, I can just adjust it really quick. True. It's true. We have a plugin for Unreal, and I'm pretty sure Casimir or Marine will find the link for you. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. And finally, as someone is asking, Eric, have you ever thought about te teaching in schools? So I gotta give the first part. Uh, you have uh, a tutorial available, as you said at the beginning, on um, Level Up, I guess, and Game Road, which is an excellent starting point. But then I will let yeah, you, you answer for for teaching yeah. in schools. Uh, I have not. <laughs> um, well, I guess it's something that I'm open to. Yeah, you you are you are located in Los Angeles. Yes. So yeah, there is good school. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people. If someone wanted to make him work in school, in the chat, right? <laughs> okay, but, let's move on. All right. So then I'm using a curve node to kind of just adjust my height values. Um, I'm moving the leaf up a little bit to make room for the stem. For the stem, I'm, it's super basic. I'm just using a, a shape a node here, using a, a trapezoid transform to kind of make the, the base wider, blurring it, I'm multiplying a gradient, and then I'm moving it into place. And then lastly, I'm kind of using a, a curve node to, to kind of clamp the values and, and and change the length of it. So I kind of have the stem like go into the leaf a little bit. So this is like the top side of the leaf. I imagine if I did the bottom as well, you'd see like the veins on the bottom. Um, yeah, so that brings us to this part where I'm adding a directional warp uh, by this, this gradient here. So this lets me kind of bend the leaf. And then, and I'll show, show this in, in practice in a second here. And then I'm adding, a safe transform where I flip the leaf and that's just hooked to a switch here so I can uh, flip it. Like, so if I bend it one way, I can uh, just mirror it, if that makes sense. So let me show you what that looks like. So yeah, here's the leaf node that we just made. And so using that uh, directional warp here, like I can basically just bend the leaf uh, one way, and then I can use the switch to kind of rotate which side um, it's on. So you can make it dense. Oh, and I also added this opacity multiply in case like two leaves are clipping into each other. I can have one kind of fall behind the other. Let me go back. I think that's just a multiply 
um, with a uniform uh, color black. Yeah, so I'm taking this uniform color black here and I'm just multiplying it um, on our height map. And then I've exposed that to a parameter. Yeah, so now we have like our four outputs here, like we have our opacity mask, our height map, like our vein uh, mask, and then like some gradients to the, the center of the leaf. So next I'm going to go to the island uh, bush graph. And this is kind of where things get interesting. Like, so the reason- yeah, Because it was a bit boring before, I really honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, I like when you when people say this. It was it, it was really awesome, even if it's gonna be m more awesome. Something that I will, you should precise about the red and green uh, leaf that we say. Why is it red and green? So here I'm uh, packing uh, these textures into the channels with an RGBA merge node. So I'm taking like a like all the four maps that we created earlier, and I'm merging that <laughs> into an RG. Uh, be a, a texture here that way like I can use a tech like just a regular uh, transformation 2d node and I can like move this leaf anywhere and it keeps that that data all together so so if you are just starting in, in 3d this is not to it's not red green and blue these, these are just values that are packed in different channels and they look like this but it's just an information it's not a we not used as a color, even if it's beautiful. But yeah, that's, that's not looks, the final goal. It looks kind of weird, but yeah, here's like our height map. We have our, our vein mask, we have our gradient, and our opacity mask. And so I'm taking these nodes and I'm kind of building like little leaf fronds uh, with them, just using a transformation 2D nodes. So I'm just kind of. Um, just making like an interesting looking leaf or a little branch, I guess. Uh, before I get too far, like, um, like I, I'm adding these stems in, which I, I built down here. And they're also very simple, just using a shape, uh, the trapezoid transform to, to make the base wider, a gradient again. I'm using a lot of the same uh, nodes over again. Um, and and then I'm just using a directional warp to kind of create a variety of different stems. So you and do the stems first and then you place the, the leaves around the, the stem, right? Yes. Okay. And I'm actually choosing like a stem that I like. So like, I like this one cause it kind of has a nice corner. And in this case, I'm actually setting the random seed to absolute so that it stays like that one stem so that the leaves always line up like it's not changing on me. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, so uh, I'm warping the stem and then I'm moving the, the pivot to the very center um, of my texture here so that the, the base of the stem is, is exactly in the center. And that's useful. Uh, when you're placing um, stuff with the transformation 2D, or even if you want to use this stem like in a tile sampler, like that's exactly where it will spawn. So, yeah, yeah just something to keep in mind. Yeah, we could almost create a, a utility node just to show the center of, of the graph. Yeah, I usually <laughs> just use the checker. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Works well. So yeah, so we have kind of our leaf shapes that we've uh, lined up with our a stem here. And then I'm repacking it again. So like, here's like our height uh, data for this little branch. And then we have our, um, like our veins and stem and then our opacity mask. And then I'm just repacking that again, like as a, <laughs> a new texture that's, that's a branch. And I'm doing that uh, like four times. So I'm creating a bunch of unique branches and then I'm adding even more complexity. <laughs> I'm combining those again and then repacking them again. So I'm taking these little uh, branch textures and I'm plugging that into a, a splatter circular color. And so this, 
this node, I can add like a little bit of variety. I can change the scale, like in its sting, um, right at our pivot. So like as I random seed this, you'll see that it has a little bit of variation. And you can add more here if you want. Like I'm kind of going for a very specific look with these stylized leaves. So like I kind of just knew what I, I wanted. <laughs> so I didn't build like, like too much like randomness into it. That's very but, cool. Yeah, I'm just using Transformation 2D again to kind of layer in these uh, splatter circular um, nodes. So we're getting like even more complex shapes now. And, I'm, and I've done that like four times here. So I'll go through a few of these branches. So yeah, I'm just repeating the same steps like over and over again. That's awesome. So someone uh, someone has noted that you you are working in uh, open in referencing context, and he says that he, it's a lifesaver. So for for people who, who know, uh, can you explain really quickly what is the uh, open uh, referencing context? Or I can do it as you wish. The open reference in, in context. Yeah. Um, so like if you have a a node that's like um, the leaves. Oh, yeah, let me go up to the leaves. So you can open a reference in context and it'll keep this exact uh, parameter. So yeah. like if I open this reference in context, like you can see that it's uh, kept my directional warp. So like I have this bend, which I didn't build into the original graph. And so it's a great way to kind of um, go through and, and see exactly what's affecting what, like especially if you find an error in your uh, graph. Um, that's probably the best way to track it down is, is use the, the opening context. That's really cool. Uh, another people is asking for your subgraph, does it matter what resolution you work with or um, just what you use in your main graph? I, I guess if you are in a reference, uh, if so you set it properly. For this tiny leaf, like in the, <laughs> the final uh, texture, like, it's, they're so small. So like, they're never gonna get bigger than than like a, a 256 really. Um, but I set them to, to 512 just in case. So yeah, that, that's why these um, nodes are set to, to 512 if, if you look closely, because they'll never need to be a higher resolution than that. Like you wouldn't be able to tell the difference if these were set to 2048 or yeah. 512, so. Uh, and I guess in that case, you can even set up the relative to parent to mine, uh, divide it by two or four. So yeah. it adapts to the size of your of your graph. It could, uh, it could, it could be another way to do it. And actually this, this whole uh, graph right here is set to 1024. So that's because like these like little bush branches never are gonna take up like even half the texture. So there's a little bit of savings there. <laughs> So uh, where were we? So I'm taking these like uh, bush branches here and then I'm repacking them yet again. So <laughs> I'm taking kind of like um, the bigger stem here and I'm kind of creating a, a, another gradient here for like the overall uh, um, branch shape. So I hope that makes sense. Um, oops. So yeah, so now we have our, like our height map. We have this like overall gradient. Oh, wait, what did I do here? And then our, uh, um, our vein and stem mask. And this will look actually really weird. <laughs> No, I love it. You should take like, it should be the base color as well. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be using these maps to, to create like our base color later on. Um, and it's super handy because if you just have like a leaf or like a, a super complex branch that you're going to try to color and you didn't have uh, these masks to work with, like you'd kind of be out of luck and <laughs> there's only so much that you could do. 
So now I'm going to go back to like our main graph here. The interesting, the interesting part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So like with this palm branch, like we just created the height map um, in that graph, like I could have also packed that into an RGBA node, but I, I just did it here. So I'm basically doing the exact same thing that I did um, in, the, in the last graph. Like I'm adding a stem here for like our, our palm branch. And then I'm taking like a, a gradient and I'm adding a length gradient as well. And then I'm packing that uh, in, into like kind of like our final uh, palm branches here. And th these look really weird, but uh, um, we're going to split all that data up and it'll, it'll work great. So I'm using just a basic uh, transformation 2D to place like the, the various leaves like in their final locations. And I've gone ahead and packed uh, every single leaf type that I have. So like, here's like our, our bushes. Um, we have like <laughs> all the, these leaves that look really weird colors right now, but we're gonna, gonna split the, the RGBA channels here in a bit. So yeah, I'm basically just kind of playing Tetris with these uh, leaf shapes and trying to, to maximize the texture space. And a lot of times, like you take these maps into Maya or, or Speed Tree and uh, build your tree out of it. And talking about the nodes that we cannot use, the, there would have been a good one in that case. The uh, the Atlas, I, I can't remember the name, the Atlas Maker, or, which oh, yeah, goal the, is that... to just make an, an Atlas for you just by uh, uh, plugging plug some parts, so some elements, but once again for substance source. This would actually work great with the like the Atlas uh, splitter node, but yeah, the Atlas nodes are very expensive, like way beyond anything that we could <laughs> fit on a substance source. <laughs> so yeah, this is basically like our final texture, like we're happy with it. Um, and then I'm using an RGBA split. So this is kind of where our channels like go out to create our various elements. Like I'm taking our height map, um, I'm splitting off like, like our veins and, and stems. Um, and I'm taking our like basic gradient here and I'm using an overlay to kind of combine like with the, the center gradient. So I'm taking like a length gradient and our center gradient and kind of combining them to create the shape. And this is gonna be used for like our base color. And with every single leaf shape, I've created a mask. So like, here's kind of like the, the bush uh, mask. Like I've created a mask for like the long leaves. Like here's the masks for the palm branches. And I'm using that to kind of mask our color. So I'm basically taking this gradient and I'm gonna be just using a, a uniform, two uniform color nodes here to create some base colors for all the different types of leaves. And I'm just masking um each type of leaf so that each each one can have its own unique color i hope i explained that well but so that'll get us get us here um i guess i'll i'll go through the the bug bites like one of the parameters i wanted to add was was bug bites on leaves which are these these little holes uh, near the edge of the leaf. I'm basically taking like the silhouette of our leaves. I'm using a, a distance node and a, I'm subtracting the silhouette to kind of just get like, um, like the part that was beveled here. And then I'm blurring it. So we kind of get like the like clean edges. And then I'm subtracting out the stems because we don't want the, the bug bites on the stems themselves. And then I'm using a histogram scan to kind of get this mask. And I'm basically just spawning a bunch of a discs with a tile sampler, like, and it's all powered by that, that mask. And then after that, I'm also subtracting the stems 
again just to make sure that that no bug bites appear like in the middle of like one of the the harder uh, stems and let me know if you get, uh, guys have any questions and then i'm using a multi-directional warp here just to create some variation and blurring it and then i'm lastly i'm just subtracting that uh, out of our shapes here Perfect. <laughs> That's why you have to know how a palm tree is made. So you know which part is <laughs> and it, bugs that, that don't eat. Yeah, yeah. I'm using a histogram scan. That's actually a parameter here to kind of control like how. Uh, if they are hungry like or not big, hungry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have some question actually. Sure. So I can take. So, so um, did you clamp some of the random seed to specific values so that everything does not break if you change the seed in the main graph? I think there is ways. But... Yeah. So like for the bushes, like the stems and stuff, they're set to absolute. Um, so we don't get any randomness with those. But like here, let me. Like if you use random seed, you'll get a little bit. And those are the, the splatter circulars that we used earlier. So it's just creating a little bit of variation, but the the overall shape isn't changing much at all. Um, yeah. But everything else I think it, like is fair game <laughs> as far as the, the random seed goes. Um, I mean, like the cuts and stuff, like they'll change, but like the the overall like type of leaf and stuff like yeah it's not going to change drastically, so yeah definitely Dep depending of the context you you may have to more flexibility but for leaves I guess you the the runs has to be quite small in order not to destroy every, everything. Yeah, if I had more time, I'd probably add a little bit uh, more parameters or maybe some switches that tape, that uh, swap out like different uh, plant species for, for other plant species. That, that could be cool. Uh, another question we you almost answered already. Uh, if we have to export the material as bitmaps, is there any sense to optimize the material or is this just in case if you want to share your material that, that's a good and I question. could add if the substance source team wouldn't be <laughs> yeah in all honesty like when i'm making a material at blizzard like it's like all we care about is the end texture and um, that's all that matters so like you don't really need like these optimizations like you usually have a, a pretty beefy computer um but like for something on substance source, like you want to see the parameters and actually now using like the the substance plugin for Unreal when you actually get to adjust the parameters in the engine, like there actually is like a good reason to have it optimized so that it, it loads fast, like when you're uh, using that uh, material in the engine. Yeah, it depends but, on the context to whom you are, you are going to share because if you have like a, a beast machine and you share with a friend who doesn't, uh, he may have some problem as well. Yeah, but in general, I think if you're just using textures, like it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> uh, another question, uh, something maybe to add to uh, to your art station. I would like to see an overview on the Unreal scene. So that won't be the case tonight for sure, but that's maybe something uh, that we, we could add. Oh, except if you have it open somewhere, but I, I don't. Oh, so. I don't right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so that's fine, uh, no worries. And um, hmm, this one is uh, why. Uh, why, um, why did you use um, distance node instead of inverted Instagram scan? But I don't think they do the same thing. So. Instead of histogram scan? Or are yeah. you talking about here? Mm, maybe, uh, I guess. I mean, Or maybe it's talking about like usually you want like a super clean uh, mask before you use uh, like a bevel or a distance. So that's why I'm using a histogram scan with the distance node. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess it's for 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 this case uh, the the distance source is ready to create this uh, external gradient. That... Yeah. 
All right, so I'll just keep uh, moving on. Um, yeah, I'm using like a directional noise here. Um, I'm blurring it to to kind of get some like folds and wrinkles, and then I'm overlaying that on my height. Um, up here, I'm I'm taking my height map and I'm converting it to a normal map, and I'm using a facing normal node and a, a curvature to kind of drive a lot of these uh, next maps. Um, I'm using a grunge map, a zero one to kind of drive like the decay and I'm, I'm overlaying that on top of my curvature. Okay. Can we see again, one second, the facing normal? Because it's not so really well known on the node and it gives really interesting results in my opinion. It's yeah. It's almost hand, hand drawn. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it looks like I'm using this for kind of like my uh, translucency map at the end. Um, but yeah, it's a, a great node. I, I use this like throughout the series uh, in various ways. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't use it that much, but honestly, it gives me a lot of idea now that I see it like that. It's really cool. So I'm using this to kind of drive like the decay. Let me turn up my decay parameter so we can see that. So I'm using, um, where is it? Ah, here we go. So I'm basically just using a histogram scan um, on my curvature to, to kind of control like where the decay happens first. Um, here, I'll show that. So the contrast is all the way up. So I'm kind of just using this to kind of control like the, where the decay happens. And I'm taking our, our bug bites and I'm um, adding that together to kind of, uh, create like the overall like decay plus uh, bug bites a uh, map, and I'm using this uh, this grunge map zero zero one um, overlaid with our curvature, going th through like a, a gradient uh, map to kind of create these like interesting like decay patterns, and I think these were just like picked off of us some scan data, and I'm kind of using a or I'm using a min darken to, to kind of create some kind of hard edges here with the, the decay. Do you take a lot of uh, scan data references? Um, yeah, especially when I'm making like realistic materials. Like, uh, I mean, in general, I like to, to be like uh, PBR correct and, and I think scan data is the, the best way to get there quickly. Um, for substance source, like, because we want the, the end user to have complete control, like I'm using a lot of uniform colors instead of like pure like gradient maps. Um, yeah, so I, I'd say a, a normal graph that I'd make would probably use a lot more gradient maps that was picked from scan data, but because this is kind of just so clean looking and, and we want the user to be able to customize all the colors, I'm just using uniform colors to keep it simple. And I'll go through my, my color map here. So we kind of have like our gradients. Um, I'm using this uh, fractal sum one that's a uh, slope blurred a little bit to create this normal. And I'm using the facing normal again to kind of just create some noise. And I'm overlaying that on, on our color information. And then I'm also uh, using our curvature here to create this shape. And I'm just kind of lightening the, the ends of the, the leaves. It was the curvature smooth, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, just to make sure. This is subtle, but I'm adding kind of like some brown to the stems. And this is why it's super nice to have like this information packed 
into the RGBA node so that you can do all this kind of stuff because otherwise you'd kind of just be trying to use like a curvature map or, or your height map. Then I'm layering in the, the decay. I'm, I'm using um, my curvature again. Uh, this time I'm actually using a, a histogram select and I'm using an add sub with this uh, facing normal um, just to create a little bit of variation. And I'm just kind of adding kind of like a lighter green, just to add some, some more interest. I can, I can tell you that people in the chat are super impressed and I can uh, see David Brass with, uh, saying uh, the optimization are mind blowing, learning a lot. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, even Jonathan dates the Atlas looks dope. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, so like the dust node is something that I use on, on almost every graph just to kind of add like a, a little layer of dust or, um, I mean, this probably isn't the best example, but it's great for just kind of masking out the crevices and um, it, it's a super uh, highly recommended node. In this case, I'm just uh, copying in um, a little bit of my, my original color. Then I'm multiplying a gradient so that uh, the stems are like are towards the base of the leaf. It's just a little bit darker. It's pretty subtle, but it's uh, nice to have. Where's the stand? Oh, here we go. So I'm taking a, a Gaussian spots too. Uh, oh, here, let me turn down my decay slider again. And so I'm just kind of creating a little bit of spots that just to add like a, a little bit of interest to the leaves, like even when they aren't decayed. And so I'm, yeah, that's what I'm using these Gaussian spots for. Um, I'm masking it uh, a little bit, blurring it, and then using a, a histogram scan to kind of clean up the shape. And then I'm just adding that to my albedo here. The, does it affect uh, just the albedo or the roughness as well? Or? In this case, it looks like it is just the albedo, but it would be nice if, if it was in the roughness. Uh, no, if I had more time, it, I, I would have nice added that. Well. <laughs> I, I was just curious. Um, and then I'm kind of just cleaning up the texture by using our overall mask to, to just kind of create like a green background. And then I'm adding just a little bit of noise. Um, and that's using a fractal a sun base with a gradient. And so, yeah, that's it for our albedo here. Um, for our roughness, um, like all of our a graphs on substance source, like we give the, the end user like complete control. So they kind of control like how they control the colors that they want. They control how rough something is. So I usually, um, I usually do that with a histogram range and I just expose that uh, with for the roughness so that they can tweak it to their heart's content. I'm basically I'm taking the the grunge from before and using a little bit of curvature, and then um, I'm adding um, kind of that facing normal from before to kind of create this. And yeah, the so the user can can change that. That's cool. For the the normal map, so like this is kind of like the the base normal that you get from our height map and you kind of get these super thick edges which you usually don't want with plants so so i'm trying to soften that a little bit um oh oh actually first i'm layering in some some of these folds and those are coming from from this uh, directional noise four i just blurred and then used a slope blur to kind of inflate those shapes 
So that's giving us these little like folds and I'm layering that with our height data. In that case, do you tell yourself, okay, this is this one that has been made specifically to make this fold, or do you say, okay, I'm going to reuse this one because it makes sense as well here? Um, in this case, I just kind of stumbled upon that one and, and liked it. I did I didn't, I didn't, Yeah. That's the best. I didn't reuse it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm trying to get rid of these like super thick uh, normal edges and I'm, so I created like this mask here. And basically I just took like the silhouette of our leaves and I'm using an edge detect. Um, I'm blurring it a little bit and then I'm uh, subtracting out this, the stems because we still want the stems to have like pretty uh, beefy normals. So now you can see the kind of like the, like the edge thickness is a lot softer but the stems uh, still have like the, the full strength of the normal. Yeah. And yeah, I'm using a just a basic uh, um, ambient occlusion node for the AO. We talked a little bit about this. I was using the facing normal to, to create my translucency map. Yeah, pretty basic. So yeah, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, so we have like our albedo here, our roughness. Oh, for the height, I kind of just blurred because if you just leave the default uh, height, like you'll get like a lot of stretching and you don't really, for an atlas, you really don't need like like a, a traditional height map. Uh, you're probably not going to be displacing it. That, that's awesome. And how many parameters do, do we have here more or less, do you know? This one actually doesn't have that many. So we kind of have like all the colors for the different leaves, the roughness, the decay amount, the bug bite amount, and then the, the scattering mm -hmm. uh, brightness. And that's- Do you that's mind click, clicking on a preview in the parameters? So in the input parameter preview at the, no, at the, at the top? You have oh, yeah. yeah, here. Yeah, so this way we can see. Yeah, so like yeah. if I wanted so, these palm leaves to be red, you can just change that right here. <laughs> yeah, so this this is probably <laughs> like the the least uh, procedural map that I made. Actually, like <laughs> most of my other materials have a lot more parameters. But uh, yeah, no, but that that works pretty well. And honestly, making a full atlas procedurally, it, of course, it takes time. But you made it for us, so <laughs> that's uh, really good for because for the final user, it means that. He has a full control of the look, look and feel of, of uh, his, uh, his scene. So that, that, that's really great. And I don't um, know if I mentioned it, but these other leaves are just using the exact same graph over again. And I'm just kind of changing the curves to kind of create some like bigger shapes or some longer shapes. But it's it's the same graph, just used So over. maybe we will see an Eric leaves generator coming, uh, coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? So yes, you have like was. Two, uh, two uh, seven, seven leaves, and uh, yeah, something like that. Well, I think did, did we make the the turn of it or of the graph? I, I guess so. Yeah, I think that that's about it for this. Um, I used a speed tree for my uh, like demo, and I made some palm trees and some some bushes and some little plants to kind of scatter on the mountains in the background. Um, yeah, I think mm. there's some ivy if you look closely. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, that's awesome. I think we will take it. first. Thank you for for all of this because it, that that's crazy. Uh, first, the look, but also all the optimization, love, and style that you put on it. That that, that that's really awesome. I, I think we can go and uh, take some time. If you guys have questions, it's the right time. We are going to make a Q and A session. Um, so I have I just wait for, for the screen to go. And um, and uh, Marine and Kazimir are here in the chat to, to take some questions if you have some. So first, I, I'm going to tell you some good words because uh, people are, this is so good. Thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah. Love, love, heart, love, love, love a lot. So <laughs> that, that's, really, that's really good. Uh, no, for the question, um, the first one is, did you generate the normal from the atlas height 
or just one um, or just one pass. No combining per plant normal. Um, normal. Yeah, I, I did just create the normal from the height. Besides those little wrinkles, and then kind of softening the edge. But yeah, other than that, it's just straight up the height map, uh, the normal. Awesome. A more general question, what would be the best, best exercises to improve substance designer skills? If you have one or two things you, that you could give to, to share a bit of your, um, based on your experience. I think Daniel Tiger's like essential series is like probably the best, like easiest way to, to get in, introduced to it um, and hit the ground running. Yeah. Do you see it because you are on his website? <laughs> no, no, it's just something I wish existed when I was learning because like there's this a is lot excellent. of trial and error and I feel like, I don't know. Yeah, all Even what Daniel does is surely impressive and, and uh, level up the website also because you, you, there is, he does some stuff on it. Uh, you, there is you, there is Pauline Water and uh, some other great artists. So this is definitely a great way to learn. The Substance YouTube channel is great as well. Like some of the tutorials that Wes has made um, are yeah. super useful. Yeah, they, yeah, Wes has has made a, a lot of series. And I think another one will come from Substance Designer. We just have to, to tweak some stuff within uh, But something should be uh, on the way. Uh, what's the hardest, trickiest material you created for work or for personal projects? Hmm, interesting one. Um, I'd definitely say the octopus tentacles, like that was something that I didn't even, know, like it might not have been possible. I was like, I'm just going to take a stab at this. And, like, <laughs> you, you know, I, I didn't look at, at it yet and I won't because I, I, each time I see it, it's like, wow, there is so much work on that. I want to, 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 to know your magic. <laughs> it's all using kind of like the base, uh, nodes and substance designers. So there's no like fancy, like. A pixel processor or anything um, which is better and more frustra frustrating at yeah. the same time because you say why did i, did I didn't think about that before and that that's awesome i, I want to see that yeah way more frustrating i'd say <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and i will cry i i someone say that i will cry again i uh, think a lot we, of the the materials that i made for art station like they don't really have a practical use like in production like they're they're made solely to just kind of push the limits of substance and and that's it really <laughs> yeah but that that that's uh, that's that's what we create why we created the infinity world because sometimes they say yes but in position would they do this maybe not but that's awesome so yeah <laughs> we have to to put it on the on the spotlight and so with your material renders in Marmoset, did you tweak the lighting setup for each of the matte spheres or stick with one uh, lighting setup for um, consistency? I, just, I stuck with one uh, for consistency uh, just because I was running out of time at the end. I think like the one thing that I changed is on some of the ship materials, like like the blue light from underneath is, is casting caustics to make it look like there's water underneath. Um, but a lot of the balls don't have that. It's just a, a pure blue light. But other than that, they're all the same. <laughs> and uh, and when you when you have time, I guess you tweak a bit depending on to give some context. Or yeah, uh, so uh, like if I had, had more time, I'd probably go in and, and just make like a, a super awesome beauty render for every single ball that's unique. Okay, uh, I have other question. Um... What is the background? I like the walls, uh, so I guess it's my background. Uh... So the wall is here. No, it's here. Okay, it's here. <laughs> uh, so which, do, you, do you remember which material uh, it is? Yeah, that's the seawall and the dark material. Maybe you can make a game if I do this. This, this <laughs> you have to, to say <laughs> really quickly the reference. Yeah, I actually ended up using the dark material as like a trim sheet uh, towards the end. So that's how I was able to get a lot of like those, those yeah, poles I actually, and stuff. Trim sheet is a good deal because you have different materials in the same one, so that's a that that's a good a good choice for a, a <laughs> yeah. material. Yeah, there's lots of recycling <laughs> between my graphs. So another question, which is a bit vast, we can say because is there any advice you could give for creating more organic shapes? It's quite big. Um, yeah, the directional warp in the. Uh, the new multi warp is is really handy. Um, the non uniform directional. Yeah. This is a good one. Um, I don't know. I think 
Yeah, I use like the clouds too a lot uh, with organic stuff. Um, I don't know, the new flood fill nodes are, are amazing for like any kind of rock or pebbles or anything like that. Um, it's hard to <laughs> to go wrong with flood yeah, fill. Yeah, it's, we, we could, I think we, we could spend eight hours and not answer the full question. Um, do you prefer to do your base color in Substance Designer or have you tried the Assassin's Creed pipeline of doing the base color in Substance Painter? Mm, I don't know if you... Have I have any. not, but I've seen some pretty amazing results. Um, yeah, I actually want to take some time after this to just try like some other programs with Designer, like maybe start something in ZBrush and, and then bring it into Substance Designer and then maybe taking it to Painter or Alchemist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's for, for people who don't know, I invite you to, to look a bit uh, to the Substance magazine. We made an article with the Substance, uh, uh, sorry, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, if I'm not wrong, uh, team uh, from Ubisoft Quebec, and they explain how they use uh, Substance Painter and Substance Designer in a very interesting way. Basically, they build the base materials in Substance Designer, but all the blendings are, are done in Substance Painter, or most of the blendings. And it's quite impressive. So good, it's a good read, definitely. Uh, we have other questions. Uh, hmm. How long did it take you to learn Substance Designer to this content? I would say to this level, but I guess. I'm still learning it, you know? I yeah, know. Good, good answer. <laughs> I don't know. I never feel like I'm like like super knowledgeable. Like there's just so much to learn with designer. There's so many like happy accidents that happen. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And especially you are going to see an artist who who comes from nowhere sometimes and who will come with new techniques that are going to say, oh my God, why? That, that's awesome. Or you, just a combination of notes. But, but yeah, you, you have, how long have you been using Substance Designer in total for now? Um, a little over three years now, so. Three years only? Well, I want to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive. Um, do you create any custom tools uh, to help you in the material creation? Um, I don't, but I use other people's tools. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that, that's a good trick. <laughs> that, that's a good one. Yeah, go yeah, and Substance Share, uh, for example. We we have some great tools. But like, if there's like a part of a graph that I like, like I'll kind of just like uh, duplicate it off into its own subgraph and, and save it for later if I if I know I can reuse it. Definitely, that, that's the way to do. You, you do this a lot? Like, for example, you say, oh, this leaves, this subgraph, maybe I will keep it in a leaf collection. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the strengths of Substance Design. Now, sometimes it takes more time than other techniques to make it first, but the fact that you can reuse it a lot, it's, uh, you, by the time you save even more time. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. What do you suggest uh, is the most important thing to keep in mind when creating stylized material in substance versus realistic materials? Um, I think like kind of the simplification of like the forms, like I kind of wanted to go for simple forms with like um, kind of realistic su surface details. So, um, yeah, for me, it was kind of the challenge of, of just trying to, to get that clean, like stylized read. Like it's easy with Substance Designer to just add tons of noise and make it super grungy, but trying to keep yeah. it like really clean, I think is the challenge. And <laughs> Did you take, because you, uh, we saw some of your reference for, uh, for the scenes, for the realistic materials, uh, but did you have some uh, stylized inspiration from? Yeah, I was looking at some Disney movies like Moana. Um, like, there's a lot of great concept out, art out there that's uh, stylized that that is just amazing. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, like the Armin no, Pirates movies is another great reference, like where they built like the sets in real life. Yeah, uh, that that was funny um, a few years ago because uh, with substance we stylized because many artists didn't think it was possible to do stylized stuff with substance. And then, so no, it's hyper, hyper realistic, so it's not made for that. But for a few years now, we have a bunch of artists that create stylized stuff. 
we even made um, an, an Instagram a dedicated collection of stylized uh, stuff yeah. made with substance just to see to show people it's completely feasible and this uh, this uh, signature release is is another uh, super great uh, example. And I'm not so, like a master of stylization either. Like this is kind of just like a, a well, test. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was super, super good, honestly. Uh, another one. Um, do you have a favorite note? So maybe you can give two if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, flood fill, I'd say. Yeah. Flood fill. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a powerful <laughs> one. <laughs> and they and they say no. <sighs> yeah, I, I was sad for this collection that I couldn't use. I feel very much. <laughs> Okay, so I guess uh, there is other question, but uh, it's time to uh, to to quit and uh, to go eat. I, I don't know what time is it on your house. My sushis are waiting for me <laughs> in the in the in the kitchen. Uh, so thanks a lot, Eric. It was super. Uh, it was excellent, honestly. And I, I guess you are going to read the the comments after, and you are going to see that people in the chat were. Super excited! Uh, don't hesitate uh, to leave uh, questions in the in the comments in the chat, of course. But after the video in the comments, we we can uh, send them to Eric Wiley, and he will answer whatever the day, the the hour of the day or night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try to. <laughs> okay, per perfect. You said it. It it's recorded. So thanks a lot, everyone. I'm going to look at not losing my meeting, my Zoom meeting, because I, I, I am at the point. It, it disappeared, oh, it's here, okay. So thanks a lot, everyone, and uh, see you in, uh, in the next uh, live stream, I guess. Let me check. Uh, yeah, thanks for having have me. Day. It, it was a pleasure, so thanks again, and uh, see you in the next live stream.